I'm outside the Bonaventure Cemetery, just outside of Savannah. It's a 160 acre cemetery that's known for its beauty. So I want to take a walk around, kind of check it out, show you some of the sights in here. So let's go. So I hope you can see this, but as soon as you walk in, there's this map here. Etched out of some kind of stone of all the plots here. So pretty decent size. And as you walk back, see here there's some tombs. And obviously a lot of the grave sites. A lot of famous people buried here as well. So as you come into the cemetery, you're coming in towards the water. So on the on the back side, as we're walking in, you get to the Wilmington River and it comes kind of marshy. It's like a bluff. But as you're coming in, it seems more like you're in the trees. But we'll see that as we get there. It's really beautiful. It's pretty peaceful, pretty quiet. I'm trying to be you know, as respectful as I can. There's uh, a lot of tourists come here, so I'm seeing a lot of cars kind of pop in and out. But for the most part, it's quiet. These trees are uh, just covered in moss and it hangs really low since there's not a lot of traffic through here. The, uh, the moss really grows low. It's just, I don't know, I don't think you see this anywhere really. So there are two different times where the cemetery kind of got brought up or I guess became more relevant. Uh, this place was originally founded in the 1840s and through the 1840s and 1850s I think a lot of people just considered it a cemetery really. It's built on a old plantation uh, but in the 1860s there's a guy named John Muir, M-U-I-R, I think that's how you say his name, and he uh, he was kind of a journeyman who had traveled through America and he wrote books and essays about how beauty, how beautiful a lot of the things he saw were. And he's kind of known for being one of those people that really helped found like national parks and kind of to recognize the beautiful parts of the country. Well, while he was on what was called uh, the thousand mile walk, he walked a thousand miles. He stayed in the cemetery for six days because I guess he was waiting for someone to, to wire him money. So while he was here, he wrote a chapter in one of his books about this place. It was a long time ago, but these, uh, these tombstones, some of these actually uh, would have been here at the same time. So a funny thing about John Muir, is if you look him up, there are a few pictures of him online you can find. And even though it was in the 1860s, if you look at him, he looks exactly like the type of guy that would go around the country and uh, write about how beautiful it is today. I mean, he had like, he looked like a hipster. He had like a long beard, shaggy hair. <laughs> I mean, if, if you took his picture and just said he was a guy now that writes poems, uh, he looks exactly like that. The second time that uh, the cemetery kind of surfaced into the public's eye was in the 90s. There was a novel, you may have read it or heard of it, called A Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And that was written about here. And the cover of the book is actually uh, a statue that used to be here. It was a statue of a girl, it's called Bird Girl. 
and she's holding two trays to, to feed the birds. Um, it got so popular that they actually moved that statue. It's in one of the museums downtown now. Um, but you probably would recognize that statue if you saw it. And that book was actually later turned into a movie. So if you've seen either one of them, it's about that, about, you know, this place. And uh, so ever since then, it kind of became a tourist destination. And right now, I mean, just being here on a random day, there's quite a few people going through. I came here a couple of years ago, the first time I ever came to Savannah. It was on our list of a few places to see. So uh, nice to be back. I'm trying to make my way towards the water and looking for a couple grave sites in particular. All right, let's see if you find strange things beautiful like I do. So in this site, let's see. The last tomb, the person died in 1976. So the last one was 45 years ago. So look at this. So in the back, you've got a couple sites, but then look at this fountain. It's just falling over. Grass is kind of grown through it. Something about it just looks really beautiful to me. In a place that's somewhat well-groomed. I don't know, something about that seems special. Okay, this side here has uh, some kind of plaque explaining the family, so give me a minute to read it and I'll show you. So, to make a long story short, these two men and their families, uh, Victor Jenkins and his, and Victor Jenkins Jr., they, uh, they founded the uh, Jefferson Athletic Club, which is a, a boys club here in Savannah, uh, later renamed after them. But um, that's their family, and they were a big part of, uh, I guess a big part of Savannah and the community in the early 1900s. And they founded the club during the Great Depression, which I guess was a, um, a nice positive moment for the community. And uh, they were really well known at the time. Pretty cool. I don't really have any personal connection to the military or anyone that served in the military. I mean, I've had family members in the past that have, but um, I guess just my appreciation for American history and kind of how this place came to be has always made, I don't know, made me respect the military. And this is a, a plot here filled with soldiers who, uh, who served, I'm assuming, people who lived in this area that served. But um, you can see if you look through some of the tombstones, all kinds of different uh, branches of the military and uh, as well as, you know, where they may have served or fought. So I wish I knew the story behind this. Um, perhaps this person was moved. Uh, from my understanding, the first burials here were in the 1840s, like 1846, but this person seemed like he was, uh, says part of, it's hard to read because it's really faded, but it says 
died November 2nd, 1775 at age 73. So this person died long before the cemetery responded. So I'm not really sure uh, how they got here. So we're almost to the first, or one of the first places I was looking for. So if you remember, I mentioned the bird girl statue that was made famous on the book cover. Well, that's been removed, but there's another famous statue that you may or may not have seen. It's not as famous, but it's pretty cool. I think I'm coming up to it right now. But I gotta say, uh, the, this entire place is, is really beautiful. And I think, so if, right behind these trees is where the water starts. Not much left of this bench, but I want to sit on it. Ugh. Let's keep going. Okay, well this is not what I was looking for yet, but this is pretty interesting. Uh, Doris Upchurch right here, she died in 2011, so I'd say definitively from what I've seen so far, this is the, uh, this is the most recent grave that I found. I'm sure there, that I've passed many others, but I just haven't seen them myself. Alright, well it's a little confusing in here and I'll be honest to say that I might be a little bit lost, but I'm almost positive I'm walking up to the statue now. This, uh, this first statue looks like an angel. Uh, this is not it, but it looks like it's right next to it and uh, it's pretty cool as well. Okay, so this black fence here, this is the other one. So this young girl, Grace, died at age six, and obviously her parents were devastated. So they hired a sculptor, and he took a picture of her, and, well, he took a picture from the family, and he, uh, he made this sculpture of her. A lot of people seem to be leaving gifts here. So there's actually a plaque that adds a little color to her story. So she was a daughter to the family that ran the Pulaski house. So some of my videos, well, most of my other videos all have the name Pulaski in them, um, but it was a hotel and she was loved by the guests and she would greet guests and the family, you know, ran the hotel or the Pulaski house as they call it. And she died a couple days before Easter in 1890. So it's like 131 years ago and um so she was known around town for being part of that house and the sculptor um when he built it i'm pretty sure it doesn't say here don't quote me on this one but i'm pretty sure he's buried in the cemetery as well
Okay, so we're heading towards the very back of the cemetery now, and uh, there are three sites here. So first of all, there's two uh, grave sites that we'll visit from famous people, and then the other thing is we're actually going to make it all the way to the water. So just kind of as a side note, I want to check that out too. Two thousand twenty one really makes the eighteen sixties feel like a long time ago, huh? Okay, so I thought I was looking for one or two grave sites before I got to the water, but I actually found a bunch of notable ones. So first thing I I'm actually not sure if this is the right one, but I was right. This is the name of the man who uh sculpted the Gracie statue. And I did look it up and he is buried here, although this is really overgrown and I don't see anything with his name on it. So there might be two families with that name here. There might be a different one. And there's a couple others right here. So let me take you around. So, if you're uh, familiar with Conrad Aiken, a uh, very famous poet. I'm not like an expert on poetry or writers, but he's buried right over here as well. I'm looking for his gravesite now. Oh, well, that's actually none of the sites I was looking for. It's pretty impressive nonetheless. Okay, so found Conrad Aiken. This looks like his parents because um, two Aikens that uh, both died long before he did. Give my love to the world. We'll do our best. So this is this is pretty cool family tomb look at some of these dates so again these all are way before 1846 so not really sure 1816 1813 pretty wild stuff I wonder what's going on in there There's still two and two sites in particular I'm looking for, but I forgot about this. I remember this from the first time I came here years ago. I found this just to be the most beautiful one. It's almost like like arches looking at the water. Absolutely beautiful. We made it this far. Let's check out the water and then we'll keep looking. I love that one. It's really, really nice. Oh, wow. So the water level here 
All right, I'm gonna take two guesses. One of them's right. The water level's actually really, really low. I just hold back here. Or the water level was really high and uh, has, uh, has made everything wet. So you can see here the river, it's very savanna. So I'm determined to find this one site, and while I'm looking, I came across something pretty cool here. These are the uh, old pumps, old water pumps that used to supply water to the cemetery way before they had city water. I think the first one it said was put in in 1905. Pretty cool. This is, this is a nice section here. You can just see that these are uh, probably pretty important people of their time. With all these you know gorgeous monuments statues sculptures and all this look at this very modest grave here five people buried okay so i'm coming to one of the sites that i've been looking for for a long time and i had to take a break and look up the other one it turns out it's not in this section at all so i had the wrong information so we'll hit that one on the way out. That's pretty cool. But you may or may not know this person. Uh, someone made very famous uh, in Savannah, one of the main roads around where I live. It's named after him. All right. Finally found it, Savannah's own, the gravesite of Johnny Mercer. So obviously the Mercer family here, and then there's a bench here for Johnny Mercer himself. Pretty cool. It says right here, co-founder of Capitol Records, winner of four Academy Awards. We've got bunch of his songs, Jeepers Creepers right there, Moon River, so the names of a bunch of his songs around there. Quote here, I like that, it says, buddy, I'm a kind of poet and I've got a lot of things to say. I like that. Pretty cool. All right, one more thing I want to look for on the way out and then we'll be on our way. Here's, here's a bold move. Look at this. General Anderson.
very uh, stoic, powerful looking sculpture. Pretty cool. Tell you what, uh, I'm gonna need a grave soon if these flies don't get off me. It's outrageous how many flies there are here. I mean, no disrespect when I say this, but besides Savannah being famous for uh, sheer beauty, it's undeniable. It's also really famous for being very haunted, they say. And uh, here's an example. I mean, how do you make an entire section of a cemetery look black and white and haunted? Look at this. Come back at night by yourself. Yeah, so that's, that's something else right there. I made it full circle, going on a wild goose chase, finally found what I was looking for. So before I explain it, you might remember me actually even showing it. Early on I passed this. The reason I couldn't find it is because this is the, uh, the burial for the Neal family, and the person I'm looking for was the wife of a Neal, and so her name was different. You might not even know who she is, but right here is the grave of Edith Chapman. And she was uh, an actress way back in the, I mean, we're talking about the uh, silent film days. So you probably haven't heard of her, but she was a big deal. It's pretty cool that she's filmed, or the, not filmed here, that she's buried here. Her husband was also an actor, so they're buried right next to each other. So you see James Neal, wife of Edith Chapton Neal. This is actually kind of a poetic place to stop because history and places like this are so important for this exact reason. This is one of the most famous people in the world. She's buried here. I bet a lot of people watching don't even know who she is. So time passes. It's important to kind of preserve these memories. So I want to see as much as I can. Anyways, thanks for joining me today. I had a great time. Hopefully we can see some more soon.